Well, good evening, everybody. It is wonderful to be with you here in this wonderful Frank Pan Hall for the first time today. Thank you for being here in person or online, wherever in the world you are. And I know many of you have stayed up late uh, to be here. Jesus College is an amazing place. We were set up back in 1144 as a nunnery. We became a college in 1496. And in 2016, the Intellectual Forum was set up to help to communicate what we do here with the world. My name is Julian Huppert. I'm the director of the Intellectual Forum. And it's been a great pleasure to have many amazing people here talking about many amazing things. We've had people like Jimmy Choo from the fashion world. We've had the former head of New Zealand, the United Nations Development Programme, Helen Clark. And now we have one of the greatest cricketers in the world, Surav Ganguly. Now, I have to say I want to start off with an apology to the traditionalists here. Uh, we had thought about doing the full five-day format for this interview, <laughs> but we're going to reduce it just to a sort of 20 questions uh, system. Um, but we did have a coin toss earlier, and we've agreed that I'm going to ask the questions and Surav will answer them. Um, but, you know, it could have gone the other way around. Um, he almost needs no introduction, really. He changed the face of Indian cricket, probably the greatest Indian captain ever. Uh, the figures, you know, in, in tests, 113 tests, uh, just over 7,000 runs, 32 wickets. He got a century on debut, and let's not talk about his last game. Um, he managed to keep his batting average the whole time above 40, which is really quite a phenomenal achievement. He's one of only six people to manage to get, in one-day matches, 10,000 runs and 100 wickets and 100 catches. Um, really amazing achievement. Almost 200 tests and ODIs as captain of India. He's been president of the Board of Control for Cricket in India. He's currently the ICC Men's Cricket Committee chair. But, of course, the most important match he's ever had was in 1996 at Fenners playing in Cambridge. Um, no, you know, not everybody gets to play in Cambridge. They play in the SCG or they play at Lords, but Fenners really is the much more exciting one. So in a moment, I'm going to introduce him to be here, and we will have a conversation, and we will open up to questions for you, whether you're in the room uh, or online. But first, can I just play a short video, four minutes, 33 seconds, about the man we're about to welcome. मैच खेल रहे थे एक फेस्टिवल मैच सीसीएफसी में उन्होंने कुछ नहीं किया था तब तक तेरा छक्के लगा दिए
Yes, uh, it's a bit disappointing, uh, but uh, all credits to them. They played very well. Uh, it was not an easy wicket to bat early on. It did a bit, uh, but I thought that's off to them. Hi, my name is Saurav Ganguly. Don't forget. जामा माने दादागिरी बोलर एर मुखे जामा माने दादा Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Surav Ganguly. Hello. 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 Thank you so much for, for being here tonight and for everything you've done in your time in the college so far. Can I just start by asking what it's like to be here? Because you're used, to, presumably, to 100,000 people watching you from much further over and, and a few people ready to catch you out. What's it like in a different environment like this? Firstly, thank you for having me here. Uh, it's been a pleasure and an honor. Uh, you know, we were here three or four months back sightseeing in this beautiful town, beautiful university town, and three months later, I'm here among all of you. But you talk about 100,000, but this is more than the closest I've had people next to me because, <laughs> because I only have 11 next to me <laughs> within the ground and within this striking distance. So this is a bit more than what I've had. The 100,000 is a bit far away, far away. So it's, it's not too bad. And, and as I said, thank you for having me. And it's a pleasure and honor. It's great, and I'll try to send the right sort of balls. That, you know, people won't be ready to catch them uh, too much. Now, we just watched this amazing video about you. Now, but you started off as a footballer. Yeah. So what, what changed? You know, what, what was your childhood like that drove you out of football and into cricket? You know, I come from a city where football was a lot more popular than cricket when I grew up. Uh, people used to play a lot more football, and I can see some faces who have been a part of the city, uh, and they are here in Cambridge tonight, and... And uh, it was a soccer-friendly city, a bit like England, where soccer is more prominent than, than cricket. And if you keep asking the English players, they feel a bit let down with the popularity of English football. So um, having said that, yes, football was more popular. I grew up kicking a football, watching football, and then got an opportunity to play cricket. You know, when I was just finished school and my dad took me to cricket, I did not know where cricket would take me, and I just kept playing, and then... By the time I played for India, cricket became more popular than football in my city. Because of you? That's, that's for all of you. <laughs> right. I'll take that as a yes. Hmm. So, um, and I mean, cricket has seen a huge change, just not, not just popularity there, but the format of, has started to change. I mean, oh, oh, cricket has, uh, has seen an enormous change, and then I can see some gray hair people in this room and they along with me have seen the change of cricket they must have been brought up in in the era of test cricket and i can see a big smile from our friend there with the with a light jacket he's <laughs> grown up watching test cricket i'm sure watching the likes of botham and willis and jimmy anderson and stuart broad swinging the red cherry in england but time has changed you know the game has changed it's got faster just like everything in this world uh, uh, cricket has changed and and in countries like India, England, and Australia, 
cricket test cricket is still very popular mm -hmm. but uh, you can slowly see the transformation in the shorter format in t20 and i think ipl has has revolutionized this format of the game around the world it started in 2008 and and i remember i was the first captain of an ipl game for the night riders played the first ball of an ipl ever and won the first game of an ipl ever <laughs> and it felt a bit awkward to captain against rahul dravid in in in, <laughs> in karnataka in bangalore and and for the first time, I felt I was a bit more popular than him in Bangalore. <laughs> and, uh, and we went on to win the game. And, and since then, this, this, form, this tournament has revolutionized and changed the way cricket is played. There are leagues all around. Every country has their own T20 format. England has the 100 ball. Australia, South Africa, it's everywhere. So just like everything in life, change is permanent. And in cricket, the change has already begun. I noticed one of the people who was quoted as saying how great you are is Jeff Boycott. Um, yeah. Would he agree that it's better now, that it's exciting and fast? No. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks it's rubbish. <laughs> so, so Jeffrey, Boy I met him a few days ago at Lord's, uh, and, uh, and he's, he's recovering from cancer, so I wish him all the best uh, and uh, a great play for England. A great player for England, born in a different era, Yorkshireman, so it's even more tougher. <laughs> it's even more tougher. Always spoke about seeming damp pitches at Headingley in the morning. Loved his cricket. Still feels he's the best English batsman ever, although I feel, <laughs> although I feel Root and Cook and Peterson has taken ahead of him. Uh, but just loved his cricket. And I think the best quote from him when he called me up, he was 80 years old, and he said, I still want to be involved in the game. I said, Jeffrey, the game has moved on. It's no defense anymore. It's only hitting sixes and fours, <laughs> <laughs> which is not a part of your strength. But uh, I knew him very well, still know him very well. A lovely human being. A little tough on English cricket at times, but, uh, but I wish him speedy recovery. Because there has been this, this huge change. And you know, I think you were saying earlier when you met with some of the students how when you learnt, you were taught how to defend, and, and now it's all about... Yeah. And sweeping and yeah. um, do you regret any of the things that have gone from the game or is it just the enthusiasm for the new no it's just like everything change change is uh, change is permanent and and things will keep moving uh, what this university was 100 years ago it's not the same now mm. the sport what was when i started in 1996 my first test uh, was different cricket was different and uh, it's it's gone for a change and it's going to, going to keep changing. So, uh, you know, players have become a lot more freer. They go around the world playing the game. And, some, and, and I honestly feel it's good because, you know, we grew up in a generation where the pressure was enormous. You know, only 11 could play of the millions who played the game and earn a living out of it. But now, if you don't play for the country, you go and play around the leagues in the world, you get an opportunity to showcase your talent. Some of them use that platform to come back and play for the country again. So it's opened up a lot of things for the good. Now, can I change tack slightly and also come back a bit to the footballing experience? Because India is phenomenal at cricket. Um, you know, it's, it's top for one days, T20s, second in tests. I, I admitted earlier I'm Australian, so we have to be a little cautious about, yeah. about some of this. Um, uh, and if you look in the women's game, it's doing really well. I'll come back to that later. But then you compare that to football, where India is not highly rated. Uh, I think I looked it up, uh, FIFA ratings have the men at 125th, women at 68th, which is rather better. If you look at the Olympics, it's not doing well. Why, why has cricket been such a huge success story where some of these other sports haven't managed to really catch on in India. Yeah, that's been surprising to me as well because such a big population and, and football, I believe, I still feel it's the easiest sport, a cheaper sport, cheaper sport in the sense cricket equipments cost a lot of money, but a football and, a, and two pairs of boots are much more affordable for, for the middle, middle, middle class and the lower middle class to play the game. So I'm really surprised that in a country like India, which is so big and where sports is so popular, has not evolved in football. Uh, the reason for cricket may be infrastructure, role models. I grew up. Another reason I wanted to play cricket or picked up a cricket bat was India winning in 1983 at, at Lords mm. against the West Indies when no one gave India a chance. 
I know that mighty West Indies wouldn't get 183 at Lords. And I think that changed Indian cricket. That changed the way young boys like me wanted to play. And then the belief, and the belief that if a Gavaskar and a Kapil Dev can, or a Mohinder Ramanath can, we can too as well. And I think that's very important. What heroes of the past do is, is show you the path to success. And most importantly, make you believe that you can, like the Australians. You know, they lost in 79 uh, to the West Indies, 75 to the West Indies, and then came the era of Steve Waugh and, and Gilchrist and Vaughan and McGrath, the best ever cricket team I've seen. And I captained most of my matches against that team, you know, beating them in India, going and doing one all in Australia. No team in 25 years had done that. That's how good Australia was. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think that's that's one of the reasons why why people like us and uh, wanted to play the game and achieve uh, what we've achieved over a period of 15, 16 years. So, I mean, th- th- I, I tend to agree that a lot of it is that sort of amazing stellar leadership and inspiration. Does that therefore mean that if you'd stuck with football, India would now be winning World Cups? And, or are we waiting for the next person to do that? Yeah, I think so. I think, <laughs> I think, uh, I think my time has gone and... And, but as, as, and as I said to you rightfully, and it surprises me that such a huge country doesn't produce good footballers. They did when I was growing up. Uh, the likes of Cosmos with Pele came to India and to play our soccer team. Uh, they had some quality players at, uh, in the past, but I think the infrastructure needs to get better. The reason why cricket is, is way, way ahead is, is the infrastructure. Mm-hmm. You know, when I grew up, seven or eight cities had fantastic cricket stadiums, Bombay, Delhi, Calcutta, Chennai, Mumbai. But now we have 38 states playing cricket, and 38 of them have world-class infrastructure. The best stadiums, the best practice facilities, you know, the infrastructure for players to develop, academies. And that's why you see champion players coming from smaller regions. MS Dhoni from Rachi. Then Mukesh Kumar from, from Jharkhand. Um, there are other younger players who've come from uh, Rishabh Pant from, from Uttarakhand, which is a very small town. Uh, so, you know, you know, players coming from Calcutta. So I think the infrastructure produced for the game, for cricket, is much more than other what, what other sports can provide to the athletes. And, and that's one of the reasons the game has really gone forward in our country. And because there's also, the, I mean, the financial position has changed. I mean, the IPL has driven a huge amount of that. Is there a need for money to come into other sports, or money it... has come into other sports? May not be to the same extent as cricket. There's money in football. There's money in badminton. There's money in tennis. Uh, uh, there's money in hockey. Hockey India is is a very strong uh, sporting country in terms of hockey. Uh, just like Australia is, Pakistan was was very strong. Now Germany, England, all of them play very good hockey. Uh, I think uh, money is definitely there in other sport, but I disagree with this completely that money is the reason for players to develop. You know, when I started playing, when the great Gavaskar, Kapil Dev started playing, Sachin Tendulkar started playing, there was no money. You know, there was no money at all. And some of the greats of the past, when West Indies had, you know, Hall, Gilchrist, Richards, Roberts, Ghana, Marshall, there was no money. They had bare minimum money to, to play. They used to come and play in England in the county cricket in the summer to make money and then go and play for the West Indies. Uh, when Diego Maradona played football, how much money was there in football? You know, so I, I don't think the reason of greatness, the reason of sportsmanship is related to money. Uh, money comes after being very, very good. And I think uh, many a times we keep forgetting and we keep measuring success in terms of money, which is not the right way to go. I, I tend to agree, but it, yeah. Um, can I also just explore, because I mean, you're, you're now, I think, chair of the ICC men's cricket. Yes. Um, but women's cricket has also seen something of a growth globally. Still a huge long way, growth. To, huge growth, huge. still a long way to go. I think there's, you know, uh, well, I, maybe I should just ask you, what do what you think is the, the future for the women's game? Huge, hugely, you know. And I've seen that transformation when I, when I joined in as BCCI president. Australia were very strong. They're still very strong. England and Australia had a very systematic uh, women's cricket. So was New Zealand. But India was behind. Mm. 
India was behind. The focus was always on men's cricket. But India has put all their might into women's cricket now as well. Uh, the world has changed. You know, if you go to India, uh, you see the women as popular as the men. And uh, in our country, the pay scale for the match fees for the men and women are same, which is which is unbelievable. It has never been there before, and it's and it's now uh, what a Smriti Mandana would get for a test, a Virat Kohli would get for a test match. So that's a huge change in India. The WPL has come in. You know, we are a part of the Delhi Capitals who who perform in the WPL, who one of the teams of the WPL, and you can see the importance given to women, and rightfully so. India is as strong now as anybody, although I still feel Australia is the strongest. They keep producing some fantastic, fantastic women players. And women cricket is here to stay. The world has transformed for the women in every aspect, whether it's business, professional life, medicine, uh, you know, industry, and so is, so is cricket in India. So it is, it is the beginning of something very, very big and a career for a lot of young girls who want to play the sport. So uh, we're going to come to some questions. Have a look. I'll have some questions online. So if you are online, please do use a Q&A feature to, to put questions. I'll come to it in a bit. And you may want to be at least starting to think of questions that you'd like to ask. What was the best game that you think you've played? As a, as a cricket match, as, as one individual cricket match? Yeah. I think when we beat Australia at Eden Gardens in, in 2001. Yeah. And not because he's, he's from <laughs> Australia, but... <laughs> You know, because he's from Australia, but uh, but but one of the best cricket matches I've seen. I was captain. I had lost the toss on the first day of a test match in, in Eden Gardens. Losing tosses at home matches in India is not the best thing. And I lost all three of the three test matches. Steve Waugh would bat first and pile up the runs as he did in that first day at Eden Gardens. They got about 390-odd, and we were all out for 150 in the first innings. And I knew the game was gone. They followed us on because they wanted to finish quickly. They thought India were not good enough. And if I was Steve, I would have done the same thing. Try and win the test match as early as possible and finish off the series. But then we went on to get 600. Mm -hmm. We went on to get 600, more than 600, and, and beat Australia on day five in front of 120,000 people. And I think that was the first time any team, after being asked to follow on, went on to win a test match. And that was test match era. T20 hadn't come in. It was red ball and white ball. Red ball was test matches and white ball was one day cricket. But I have not seen a test match like that ever. Mm. You know, beating that Australian side, they came to India after winning 16 test matches in a row. And for them, India was the final frontier. And Steve Waugh loved India. You know, it was his final frontier, probably the greatest captain I've seen, Steve Waugh. The greatest cricketing team Australia have played against, and to beat them at Eden Gardens on day five at 4:30 in the evening <laughs> was phenomenal. <laughs> and Rahul Dravid and VVS Lakshman, I did get a few, but I didn't get a hundred. Dravid got 160, and Lakshman got a 281. Mm. And I think probably the best test innings I've seen in my era as a as a batsman from VVS Lakshman. India were down and out behind. And then to come, and actually it's today's VVS's birthday. Ah. It's his Lakshman's birthday today. He turned 50, so it's a, it's, a, it's a good number for him, and I wished him this morning. So to see him bat like that in test matches and win a test match for India was unbelievable. And we went on to Chennai in three days' time, beat Australia, and win the series 2-1. Mm. And the reason I say this is because that was probably the best cricket team I've played in that generation. Very satisfying to beat them then. So yeah, very satisfying. Galling from the other side. Um, <laughs> but so on, on that, you, you've hinted at some of the players you really respect. Who, who do you think are the greatest people you've played with or against? There were many during that generation, and every team had some great players, which unfortunately is missing in the current generation. And I don't want to compare. I don't compare generations, uh, but every team had a gra had greatness. Australia had Steve, Ricky, Shane Warne. Glenn McGrath, Adam Gilchrist. You know, the best thing Harbhajan Singh said to me at Eden Gardens, yeah, I, I get everybody out and then I see Gilchrist coming to bat at number seven. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good he was. And, and, uh, and 
that team was special. We had Tendulkar, Dravid, Lakshman, Sehwag, Kumle, Harbhajan, all, all achieved greatness during that era. You went to Pakistan, there was Wazim, Wakar, Inzamam, Yunis. They were great players. Sri Lanka had Murali, Matai, Murali, Dharan, Mahela, Sangakara. Every team had great players. England had great players, you know, Peterson, Anderson, Broad. The West Indies had Ambrose Walsh and Bishop. I remember going to the West Indies in 97, and I entered the lift in Jamaica after a probably 24-hour flight, and all three of them were in the same lift. <laughs> Ambrose Walsh and Bishop, and I was, I was actually here. <laughs> and I was actually here, of, it was in Jamaica, and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, we had just got married. We had just got married and we went to the West Indies and I told her, listen, this is what I'm going to face for the next two months. <laughs> <laughs> Ambrose Walls and Bishop. So mm, our friend, Miss Sonita, is from Barbados, one of the best places in the West Indies. So uh, then there was Brian Lara from the West yeah. Indies, probably the greatest left-hand batsman. So that generation had champions in every team. And that's what Test Cricket does to you. Test Cricket mm -hmm. produces greatness. T20 is fine. You love the music. Love the fireworks, it's in the night, a lot of beer, a lot of laugh, and then you go home. But greatness is produced by test cricket, and I think that generation had some great players. It's, that's really fascinating. I mean, it's such a huge range of people there, but it's slightly disappointing if you think we're not going to have quite as many such great people now. That's, called, that's going to be a challenge. Yeah. That's really going to be a challenge, and, and that's why I keep saying that you keep playing T20 cricket, you keep, have, keep having the colored clothing, you keep having the white ball, keep having the lights, but somewhere down the line, test cricket needs to be played because a Joe Root is produced from test cricket. You know, see the numbers. A Virat Kohli is produced from test cricket. Yeah. A Rohit Sharma is produced from test cricket. So that's very, very important to the world and, and that needs to continue. And I think both formats can continue. Both formats can be in, in balance and in sync and, and have their own place in the, in the cricket structure or the cricket uh, scheduling and and to make T20 cricket more profitable, more attractive, test cricket needs to be there. Um, in a moment I'll come to questions from here, so if the team can just be ready uh, with the microphones, we already have a, a, a good number online here. You've spoken very positively about your opponents, but there's certainly been some tensions as well between various different captains. Uh, how real were those tensions? They were, actually. Uh, they were real on the field, yeah. but not off the field. You know, you competed on the field, you wanted to win, and I have, I have tremendous respect for Steve Waugh. You know, the way he played the game, the English will have probably more than I did, because they kept beating them in the ashes all the time <laughs> during that period. We still managed to beat them in India, but England didn't beat them in England or in Australia during that period of 10 to 12 years. So uh, there was competitiveness, but there was enormous respect off the field. Nasir was in England, yeah. and uh, he was, I think, a quality captain for England. Competed, we unfortunately beat them all the time. <laughs> and, uh, we came in England in 2002, beat them here. Then they went to the Champions Trophy in the semi-final. We beat them. World Cup, we beat them. They went to India, we beat them. 2007, we came back here, we beat them. So we kept beating them a few times. But I think he was a fantastic captain, Nasir Hussain, very competitive. Stephen Fleming of New Zealand was good. He was another good captain. There were quality teams around in world cricket. And that's why you had quality captains, because good teams make good captains. Mm. And I've always said that a captain is as good as his team, because that's what he can lead, and that's what he can marshal, and that's what he can play with. So there were some quality captains in that generation. Ram Smith of South Africa. Another tremendous captain, captain more than 100 test matches. Very few do it, or very few have ever done it, captain more than 100 test matches. So, Graham Smith of South Africa was special. Mm. And again, just, just before we finish, because you, you very nicely say that a great captain needs a great team. But for a great team to exist, it needs a great captain as well. It's been um, you know, so it was quite exceptional how you managed to shape that team. I don't think it was just a great team who did their own things. Your, your leadership was Yeah, it was, was. it was, but I had, the, uh, I had the ammunitions to go to war, as they say. <laughs> you know, and uh, I had a Tendulkar, I had a Dravid, I had a Sehwag, 
I had a VVS, I had a Kumle, Harbhajan, so uh, I really had to be poor to not to be a good captain <laughs> uh, with those with those players, and 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 I think uh, one is related to the other. A good captain makes a good team, and a good team makes a good captain. That's a very fine margin. Mm. Very fine. Very rarely you will see captains with good teams mess it up. Very rarely it happens, because the players with their performances make up uh, for for a little bit of weakness or strength, whatever you call it, they have. So, so, uh, so I was fortunate enough to lead some great players, which turned me into a good captain. I, I think a great captain would be the description. But let's take some questions from around here in the room. So please do put your hands up to if you have a question to ask. Um, and uh, we'll, you don't have to be sat over on this side to ask a question, just to be, to be really clear. I'm, I'm not quite sure why it's so We'll start off right there in the front row. Hello, sir. Happy Diwali. Happy Diwali, yes. And, uh, I would like to thank you for all the memories of my childhood. Like, uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. And uh, the, a question I had is, uh, when you were discussing uh, modern day cricket, you talked about Virat Kohli and Joe Root, who were batsmen who were competing and trying to break uh, Sachin Tendulkar's records. We don't often hear about modern day bowlers who are trying to uh, break records of Asim Akram or Mutaya Murlidharan. Uh, do you think bowling has not kept up with batting as the game has progressed? Or uh, Well, I'll try to be a bit positive because my friends who are in the batting group in the modern day will really not like me saying that the bowlings are weak these days. <laughs> <laughs> so I would, really, I would really like to say that, you know, you had a Jimmy Anderson you know, from England who's just retired and, and has been an absolute revelation as a fast bowler to play almost 200 test matches. Is, is is beyond magic. So, you know, you had Jimmy Anderson, there are some good ones around in the modern era. Uh, there is there is Bumra, who I think is world-class. Mohamed Shami, who is world-class. South Africa has a few in Rabada, in Nokia. So there are some good ones, but to be honest, there were better ones in the past. <laughs> um, there are better ones in the past and 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 I'll be absolutely honest about it. But that's the way it is, actually. You know, the shorter format takes away a bit of skill, takes away a bit of skill, and 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 the likes of Wazim, Wakar, Zahir, Magra had to bowl 30, 30 overs in a day in a test match. And it not only made you stronger, fitter, but got you more skillful as well. Great, we've got time for another question here. Gosh, there are a number. Um, I'll, I'll come at the front here as well. You don't have to be on this side or male or anything else like that. We can distribute them much more, but yes. Hi, good evening, Dada. And if I sound nervous and jittery, it's not me, it's you, it's the Dada effect. <laughs> uh, so my question is about adversity. Uh, I'll cite two specific instances. One, uh, we saw the Pepsi ad, Bhule to nahi. It couldn't have been easy. As a top sports person, you could have gone, I'm sort of effing Ganguly. Why, why should I do that? I should have done that. <laughs> Honestly. And, 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 the second and, is and about I still say to everyone, I should not have done that. Um, the second is about the IPL. When it began, uh, your crop of top cricketers, I'm not sure if everyone understood what the template was at the time. Uh, what was the adjustment like? And after you made that adjustment, I remember you being the fourth top scorer in the IPL in 2011 or 12. Af and after 2010. that, 2010. And after that, KKR not retaining you, you going unsold in uh, the auction. Again, I personally, as a fan, was devastated. I bought a T-shirt which said, no Dada, no IPL. Um, <laughs> personal story. But how did you get over that and uh, so, fantastically later. You know, as a sportsman, you get used to rejections because it's a team sport. It's not an individual sport. And I'll tell you a story. I saw I saw Roger Federer at the, at the Wimbledon. I can't remember the year. It's 2012 or 13. I came to Wimbledon to watch him. And he got absolutely smashed by Nadal. And even I, sitting on the court that day, I thought it, the champion is over. Um, he's getting past 30 which is a number in, in, in tennis. You know, you see Nadal, quick, strong, fitter, moving on the court much more swiftly than Roger Federer. And we have a new champion. But that's the advantage of an individual sport. 
If it was a team sport, Federer was gone. <laughs> may not have played again, may not have, may not have had the opportunity to come back and win a couple more Wimbledons after that. And I saw him back three years later, winning a Wimbledon. So sometimes in a team sport, you have to bear that because you get selected by others. It doesn't matter whether you're good, bad. Sometimes, you know, the situation takes over. You know, I remember when I finished playing one-day cricket uh, in 2008, I scored 1,300 runs that year, the second highest in the world. But then I was getting on the wrong side of 30. So there was a thought process that three years down the line, with the World Cup coming in, I'll be about 40 years old. So probably not be in a place to play one-day cricket. So decisions in team sport are taken differently. Decisions in, in team sport are taken collectively, and somebody else is taking decisions on you. And I was probably not the first, and will not be the last who go through such situations. And, and that's the reality of sport. And you have to deal with it. Yes, there are, there are, mm, I would say, frustrations. There are anger, a lot of emotions, which say that you know I'm still good enough and I'm not getting an opportunity. But that's the way it is. Can I bring in a question? In fact, combine a couple of questions that have come in online. So, uh, firstly, um, Sumendu Chatterjee. Uh, says, you left the cricket field nearly about a decade ago. You're still one of the most popular faces in this part of the world. I, I assume Sumendu is, is over there. You're an inspiration for so many young people. What keeps you motivated so much? And just to expand on that, because Vinod Khanna also asks specifically, what motivates you to work hard, keep such high levels of fitness, and strive to reach greater heights? Uh, I think it's the, it's the want to succeed, or, and... The success has changed, it's changed its roles because I don't get to play cricket anymore. I wish I could, but obviously with age, you don't play anymore. And, and you get different roles to do in life and you try and, and, you try and uh, be the best at it. I think what the sport has taught me because of the competitiveness and, and I had to be very good to survive during this entire 15 years of my career what it has taught me is that you know whatever whatever option i am in life i have to compete to be the best and i think that's 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 what has be, remained in my character and i'm sure it's the same with everything everyone here there are young professionals here young students here there are senior students here teachers here who all get different roles at different stages of their life but the want of being successful and not to be looked at someone who could not do it always remains in the character because I played almost 500 games for India and every game was an opportunity to succeed. You were either a hero or a failure by 4.30 in the evening and sometimes at 11 o'clock in the night in day-night matches. So life has been like that. 15, 16, 17 years of your life has been like that. Of, of competition, of winning, of succeeding, of scoring hundreds trying to avoid failures so that, you know, you don't make a fool of yourself. So that character still remains. That, you know, that, that quality remains in you that when you get an opportunity to do something, you have to be successful. You cannot be a failure. And I think that's what sport teaches you. When you're on the last legs of a marathon and when your body is not working, you're tired, your legs are aching, but you know you have to win it and then when the mind takes over, the last few miles of a marathon is the mind over the body. And I think uh, that's what sport teaches you, that, that when you get an opportunity, you, you try and win it, because that's what you've done for the best part of your life. So there's just a question that's come in following on from that from Onkar Mehta, and then I'll come back to the room. Dear Radha, would you like to coach Team India in the upcoming future? Is that the next role? Let's see if I get an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. You know, you never know where life goes. And you never know what opportunities you get. Uh, and I think for everyone, every every individual in this world, it's about opportunities. You know, there are good players mm. who've never got an opportunity. And I've seen that in my career. I've played with people who were as good as I was, but I was at the right place at the right time. And I think that's very important in life. So it depends on, on, on what opportunities you get and, and what you feel at that moment. 
So, so maybe is what I'm hearing from that. Yeah, there's never, <laughs> there is never. If a they're watching, he, you know. There is never a closed chapter on anything in life. Do, do you still play for fun at least? No, I don't. I am involved in the game. I last played the Masters in 2018, where I did pretty well actually. I hit Andrew Simons for a couple of sixes. So, so it was Courtney Walsh, it was Callis, so enjoyed it. But it's not easy because you're used to playing all around the year. You train, you stay fit, you you get better because you keep playing all all the time. But when you don't keep playing all the time, it's not easy to just switch on and switch off. Mm. So I'm involved in a different way, uh, you know, in with teams, which usually happens with sports people. You know, once they finish their own career of playing, they try and get involved in a different way. And, and I'm happy doing that. A shame. I was, I was going to ask you if you wanted to play for Jesus College. I think you would <laughs> help us immeasurably against some of the other colleges. But, um, yes, we'll, we'll take a question. I'm going to try and go this way, over at the far end this side. So, sort of right, right at the very end. Sorry. I will come back to the more. I don't know why this side has more questions than that. There must be a sort of you know, leg side, offside thing. But, yes. Um, Mr. Ganguly, beyond Hi. your skills at the game, you're known for being really good at giving youngsters confidence by putting them in certain positions. So I'm curious, in terms of leadership, how do you decide what kind of leadership, so like hand around the shoulder or more tough leadership, works for whom? And also, who will react well when given more responsibility? It's a gut feel. It's a gut feel many a number of times. And also, after spending a bit of time with, with individuals, you understand. Because when we were playing cricket, we actually spend a lot more time with the players than with your family. So you were always on the road playing the sport, so you understood them. You saw them off the field. You saw them, how they react to small, small things in life off the field. You know, their behavior, how they, re how they react when, when you are facing a difficult situation. Because, you know, what you do off the field, you carry it on the field. And, and I judged by that how much hard work they put in, how much keen they are to succeed. So all these small, small things you notice over a period of time, and then you judge players and individuals accordingly. Just pick up for that, Surab Desai, who says he's your huge fan. I think everybody here is. But um, just wanted to ask about leadership and how much it's leading from the front and showing people how it's done, and how much it's sort of stepping back and creating the environment for people to flourish. Do you have I think I think you need to create an environment to flourish. When, you, when you're playing a team sport, uh, it's, it's the message which is important, what you do in a dressing room. Uh, leading from the front is, is a very common term in sport, that as a captain, you, you try and lead from the front. But even, even after being a captain, you have your restrictions, you have your, uh, you have, uh, you know, you, you may not be as good as somebody. Like I was not as good as Sachin, but I was his captain. Mm -hmm. So I had to find a different way of dealing with him and different way of, uh, of getting him involved in the side. So it, it, it was not about just one hard and fast rule. It's about, it was about acceptability, and it was about dealing with individuals differently, because every individual is different, and every individual has a different way to succeed. You don't expect uh, X to succeed as Y, because, because that's the way it is. And I think that's the beauty of leadership, is, is about understanding how every individual works. We, we dealt with a small group of people, so it was a bit easier, 14, 15 players in a squad. It's a lot more difficult when you're a CEO of a big industry where there are a lot more people working. But having dealt with 14, 15 people, you, you are in a position to judge individually and then let them flourish. I, I'm a big believer of that. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am a big believer that my way is not the highway. And, and I think I believe that you hire individuals to tell you what to do, and it's never the other way around. And I firmly believe that as captain, as a leader, I wanted individuals to express themselves. I wanted individuals to, to believe that this is their team as much as mine. And I think that was very important to understand the mindset. It, I, I believed in, in you know, getting players together to perform. Many believed that if you put pressure on players, they perform. I probably believe the other way. Mm. That's like every individuals have different ways of leading teams and different ways of getting results. And and I and I was close to everyone. Mm. You know, 
if you were a party person and you wanted to go out in the night i was acceptable to that if you were someone who would be at 9 o'clock in the bed getting ready for next morning i was happy with that as long as you performed on the field mm. so i think flexibility in leadership is very very important so we'll take a question from the back i'll try to remember everybody here or upstairs but yes we'll take the one over there Thank you. Uh, I'm actually overwhelmed, like most of us, by your presence. Uh, What's I your name? My name is Karthik. Karthik, and you're from? I'm from Delhi. Delhi. I have my wife and my son with me. Okay. Uh, I never believed that. Most of us would never believe that we are with you, and there would be millions of people like us. So I, I have been watching cricket since 2001 and two. You know mm. that those times, and uh, I would like to say that you created opportunities not for yourself but your team members like the names you said like you just mentioned that the captain is as good as the team but i would like to say you blended them together yeah. you protected them many a times you brought out that attitude that we now see maybe virat kohli then yuvraj singh led earlier so that attitude to face maybe australia and so i was reading some in some article that brian lara the great Brian Lara once he came to you and asked how to face the Australians. Mm. And then you told something of like, a match is also won before the first ball is born. That mm. attitude, that Aussie attitude is the is what you you should, you know, go and uh, that, yeah. Do it we, yes, yes. So I don't have a, at le actually a question because my mind is totally <laughs> blank. <laughs> I, I would just like to say thanks to you. I would say some percentage of where Indian cricket is today is due to your you. uh, existence, I would say. And Thank you. <laughs> and, yeah, and we all are fortunate, not today, but I would say to take birth while you, you were playing. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. I, I, thank you. I, I'm, not, I'm not just saying, I'm, I'm feeling it, you can see. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for everyone and you, obviously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I think we'll come uh, right to the front here. I will try to fit everybody in if I can. Uh, hi, Dada. I'm Shaurabh Banerjee. Uh, so great to meet you here. So I think partly you have answered my question, but I wanted to ask you, what are the key, key factors that made you one of the greatest captain, and how do you deal during your failure? Uh, I mean, keep, you, keep yourself motivated. I don't think motivation is a problem. When you play for the country and, and when the entire nation is wanting you to succeed, the entire nation is following you, motivation is not a problem. The issue is how you find a way to succeed. I think that's important. And I think the most important criteria of succeeding at that level is about handling pressure, is how you deal with it, how you deal with the expectations at that level where, you know, you walk out on the street, we played Pakistan, uh, you know, during that period, even the room service guy who would come with food in the room would give the food, open the plate, put it properly on the table, and by the time he leaves, he would quietly say, Ki, sir, kal century banana. <laughs> you, must, you must make a hundred tomorrow. <laughs> so so that's, those were the expectations you, you dealt with. You know, you walked out to bat at Eden Garden sometimes. You know, I used to walk out to bat at Eden Garden, and as I came out of the dressing room, a hundred thousand would just scream. And as you walk into the wicket, you keep telling yourself that don't get out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't get out. And you know, I used to have a, I used to have a um, quiet bit of love and hate relationship with Sachin. He's, he's, he's probably one of my dearest friends. And we played, opened about more than 200 games as a batsman. And every time India would go to bat, people would want to come and watch Sachin. And every seat was full. And I used to tell him that in one day cricket, why don't you take strike? He says, no, no, there's too much noise. You know, I don't like it. So I said, sometimes you take it. He says, no, you know, he always had an answer for that. When he was playing well, he was in great form. He would say, you know, I'm in great form and everything's going well, so I'm better off as a non-striker to start with. And he wasn't in form, he would say, you know, I'm not in good form, so I'm better off as a non-striker. <laughs> so, so somehow he found a way to be at the non-striker's end. And, uh, and you know, f as I said, it's about handling the expectations, it's about handling the pressure. All of us have pressure in life.
and if you don't handle it somebody else will do it i'm sure you're a professional your boss has expectations on you and you're a banerji from calcutta so <laughs> so we come from the same city and uh, and you have to deal with it every day the moment you enter the office so find a way to create your own zone of performance and we did that you know we used to check in at the hotels and i used to leave a note at the reception whatever you do don't put the newspaper under my door the next morning because i don't want to read what's happening <laughs> i don't want to read what's happening so and that was not disrespect that was just to create a zone for me to perform so that you know none of the outside forces could weaken me mentally because there will be times i'll not succeed most number of times i will succeed otherwise i won't be playing for india so i found a zone of performance for myself and i think that's what's very important in your professional life everybody will sit on your head do this do that but at the end of the day you should be mentally strong and bullish enough to create a zone to succeed and i think that's very important um since you mentioned him there's a question from alex harrison just how special was sachin tendulkar very special i had two specials vvs very very special lakshman but his actual <laughs> name is vengipurappu venkatashai lakshman you couldn't pronounce it so the easiest thing was to say very very special lakshman <laughs> and 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 then i had sachin who was double very very special <laughs> so so he was he was a god's gift he and still is and speaking of god's gifts what are great things about being at jesus is we can get questions up from the gods so <laughs> up at the top there my name is kaleem and i dada i want to say like we pakistanis love you as much as indians do <laughs> <laughs> so my question is we have all all the time we have already all the time discussed about ashi series so why not we should create that kind of thing between pakistan and india <laughs> and i believe people will forget ashes after that <laughs> <laughs> that's very true though i have played in some great india pakistan matches and the excitement is bigger than the ashes so i totally agree i i went to pakistan in 2004 first time as captain and india won for the first time ever in 50 years in pakistan and it was one of the best series i have played and i mean it you know the hospitality and i remember landing in karachi in 2004 i've never seen so much security in my life it was unbelievable the end, we went from the airport to the hotel it was a it was about a 30 minute drive to the pearl continental hotel and there was not a single soul on the road everything was shut it was just the indian team going to the hotel and and your security is to be called the tigers and i have not seen such security every every stadium we played packed people were friendly and i remember playing in peshawar and it was then there were pathans in peshawar and they were on both sides of the road wearing the white pathans and it was a sight so i remember pakistan then playing pakistan in world cups they had some great players who were great friends wasim wakar you know i don't get to see said anwar anymore yusuf yunus they had some champion players so i rightfully believe and say that it if it's played it's bigger than the ashes <laughs> so we'll take a question here. Yes. And then I, and, and then we'll come back and take some up at the back here. Hello Saurav. Uh there, previously there was a question about the most memorable match uh that you have played. So the first thing which came to my mind was the one where you took your t-shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> at Lords. Was <laughs> that one of the most You know I'll tell you a story about it. but four or five years ago uh, i'm on the mcc world cricket committee so four or five years ago i was at lords and i wanted to enter the home dress away dressing room so i entered from the meeting and there was a young steward at the dressing room and he took me to the balcony so this is the balcony i said yeah this is the this is the lords balcony you know sir saurav ganguly took his shirt off at the <laughs> balcony <laughs> <laughs> so he must have been taught by because it's a it's a tourist spot lords and people <laughs> people come and see the the uh, museum the ground it's a fantastic place to play cricket so he has been told that whoever visitor comes 
you must tell him that this is the place where Saurabh <laughs> Ganguly took the shirt off. It's there in the, it's there in the museum. <laughs> so he came and told me, I said, who is this Saurabh Ganguly? He says, you know, somebody from India. I said, have you seen him ever? He says, no, 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 I've just joined this ground for the last couple of years. But I'm told that everybody who comes, I have to say that this is the <laughs> Saurabh So I've been through that at Lodz as well. <laughs> You weren't tempted to model for him. No. <laughs> uh, gosh, there's so many. I'll take the one over there, and I'll, I will try to get to as many as we can. In fact, what I might do, if we take a couple of questions together, because um, otherwise we're not going to fit everyone in. So we'll take that one, and we'll take, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi, Dada. So, so the question is morely like, how do you teach the upcoming generation on how to play the innings deep? Like, for example, I would have said Pan, but since I don't want to say now him. But Prithvi Shah, if you take an example, how do you make him play 20 overs completely? How do you, is it an art that you pick up or is it something that you can teach? I think Prithvi Shah is a very fine young player. His record in the longer format is phenomenal. And I think you will see a lot more about him in, in, in domestic and international cricket in the years to come. I think he's a very special player and, and he knows how to play in the longer format of the game. But as you rightfully said, that players need to be a bit more patient in the longer format of the game. What T20 has done and, and with the professional side of T20 cricket, players are trying to find different ways of scoring runs. So it, it's taken away the defensive skill from their batting a lot more. So that's something which needs to be worked. You know, the, it's, gone, it's gone the other way. We've grown up trying to defend and then manufacturing aggressive shots as the game went on. But this generation are made to grow up with attacking shots and then find a way to defend. So the game has changed that much. And I think young players will have to be taught that art of defending, especially in the longer format of the game. Um, we do have a limited format game tonight. So it, we'll, I'll try to get through as many as possible. We'll need sort of short questions and, you know, Somewhat short answers. Hi, Dada. I'm going to keep it as short as possible. Uh, my grandfather lived in Behala, and uh, at one point he used to bait me into going for walks near your house just to see you. I never <laughs> saw you then, uh, but I'm seeing you today. So it's great to be here. My question is, um, what do you think uh, is the biggest challenge facing Indian cricket in the future? Um, if you can kind of reflect on um, how the IPL has changed, revolutionized Indian cricket, but also if there are areas in which you see it, you know, India is lagging behind, especially in terms of its reach in remote areas like Northeast India. No, India's reach is, is enormous. As I said at the start, if the 38 states who have 38 world-class stadiums, and Northeast is, is part of it. You know, you go to Assam, you go to Tripura, there are some world-class stadiums in that part of the world as well. I really don't see any problem in Indian cricket. Indian cricket's problem will be only if they can't manage the enormous resources they have. There is no other problem with Indian cricket. And I think that's important. Uh, the talent pool is unreal, and not just in cricket. We Indians are very talented in everything we do. And we have scholars, we have cricketers, we have the best doctors all around the world. And, and I think that's, that's because of the tenacity, that's because of the want to succeed. You know, we are a great nation. And I think the biggest challenge for Indian cricket will be to hold on to its talent. Because there is huge amount of talent because of the population we have. And, every, and everybody wants to be a Kohli. Everybody wants to be a Tendulkar. Everybody wants to be a Bumrah. So that's, that's the, that's the uh, desperation young kids have these days. And I think the biggest challenge for the people concerned will be to hold on to the talent and make sure that they're channelized on the right path. Um, just following on to that, because Alex Ferguson and Bernard Belloni asked somewhat related questions about the rest of the world. So um, Alex asked what the future of test cricket is when there's such a huge economic imbalance with the BCCI, ECB and Cricket Australia having so much influence. And Bernard said, you know, you have this enthusiasm for the West Indies glory days. What, what are you going to do to try to make lower ranking teams more competitive? I don't think it's the responsibility of the BCCI or England or Australia because of the financial imbalance. I think when the likes of Vivian Richards, Joel Garner, Brian Lara, Desmond Haynes, Gordon Greenwich, and and your head will be will be able to uh, will be able to 
uh, understand what I'm saying because she came from Barbados and I'm sure she's seen a lot of great West Indian cricketers during that era when there was no money. Mm. There was no money. You know, Kirtley Ambrose was the best fast bowler of all time, one of the best. There was no money. Then he used to play the guitar and bow, go and bowl fast in test matches. You know, there was Courtney Walsh from Jamaica. And there were many more who wouldn't get an opportunity to play West for West Indies at that time and just came and bowled quick. Mm. You know, you had Lara, you had Richard. There was no money. So I don't think financial imbalances create, create players. Uh, and I think it's about, it's about the want. Yes, finances are important, but it's about the want. And it's about, as I said, channelizing the talent in the right manner uh, is very, very important. So India produced Gavaskar, Kapil Dev, Tendulkar when there was no money. You know, I started playing, I played my first international cricket for 400 rupees. So I don't think money is the reason for success. And, and talent will always blossom irrespective of what it is. Got a question up over there. Hi, Mr. Ganguly. I'm a student and I had my first experience of captaincy last year uh, or this past summer. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, when you're on the field, you spoke about gut, your gut feel and leadership. Um, what makes a good decision maker on field? How much do you trust your own instincts and how much do you back your teammates and hear them out? Because often it's hard to make those decisions. Um, you don't have so much time to hear all your teammates out on the field, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Maybe people just walking past you will say that that they feel this needs to happen. But at the end of the day, you are in control of the game. You have to be ahead of the game. You know, it's not what you... If it's the 40th over, you should be ready to do what's in the 45th over. You know, that, that's how far ahead of the game you need to be. And then at the end of the day, you must understand that you have been given this job to do because people feel you can do it. So you have to trust yourself. You have to trust yourself in making decisions. And I think that's what's important. Don't, don't, be, don't have doubts on yourself that what if, there's no if and buts in life because you have the decision to make at that particular moment. So do what you feel is right. Thank you. And I wanted to show... Uh, Thank you for the legacy you've left behind. I've worn my India shirt today. So. <laughs> as, long, as, as long as you keep the shirt nice. on. <laughs> um, up over here. I thought when you said about legacy, I thought you were taking everything off. <laughs> well, luckily, you have the India shirt with you. Th thank you, Dada. Uh, it's, it's really amazing to be here in, 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 in presence of you. And, and everyone has expressed really well. And thanks, Julian you as well for getting us in front of uh, Dada. So I have two questions. There were plenty of questions coming in through, but I'll just be very precise. Just one more on the uh, intellect side, if I may say so. While growing up in late 80s, 90s, we used to see on maybe a, a six in a match or something, and we used to mesmerize it over six months and so on. Lately, we see so many sixes coming up in, in a match as such. So is it more on the batting side skill as, as players yeah. have improvised or the bowling has gone down? And what's your view on that? No, it's the mindset. It's the need of the game. It's the need of the game. Uh, players are a lot stronger these days. Stronger, bigger, bats have got better. So it's a mixture of everything. And I think the modern day game demands hitting sixes and fours. And Everything in life has changed. You know, when you and me grew up, this mobile phone wasn't there. That has changed. Now you have everything within your fingertips. So the world has changed, and cricket is no different. Thank you. Just have one question purely from the leadership. <laughs> we have a lot of people to fit in, in quickly. Any particular decision which you, I mean, you would have done thousands and millions and so on, but one decision which you really regretted, and then how did you come over it? I, one decision I regret, but I'll tell you outside this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we'll take the one here. I will, I, I'm trying to remember the people who've had their hands up. I'll do my very best. Hi, Dada. Thank you for your time here. I just have one quick question because you have seen so much of cricket and so many cricketers who are playing in the current Indian Test team. So which one do you think can be the next captain material? From your experience, because we have done so okay. many leadership. See, with 10 IPL teams now, everybody wants to captain India. 
But I think the, the selectors think that Bumrah is the next captain. So they have him as vice captain. And I think he's very skillful. Uh, he knows the game. He knows what to do under pressure. So looking at the way he's gone about his job as a, as a fast bowler under pressure, you saw the World Cup game against South Africa, how good he was in that very important over. So I'm sure he will have tactical knowledge and, and mindset to deliver under pressure. So with him being the vice captain of the national team, I think he's definitely a contender to be captain. Right at the back. Hi, Dada. Uh, my name is Sriyang Ganguly. So I have a personal sense of <laughs> pride and satisfaction when MLB scored 100 in my childhood. Uh, changing the pace a little bit, my question is, we saw a clip of your show, Dada Giri, which we all love. How was the experience going from cricket to in front of the camera and what you learned from that? It wasn't an easy experience. And uh, you, you're, you're, st you're working in Cambridge? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're living in Cambridge. So it wasn't an easy experience because I remember going to the shoot for the first day. It actually took them two years to convince me to do it after I finished. But once I got convinced, I remember going to the show and there, everybody was in my ear. The producer, the director, there was questions coming and I had to look at the monitor. There, was, there were participants. And I remember coming home and telling my wife that this is, this is not going to last long. <laughs> after a couple of shoots, they'll find somebody new because this is completely different and completely beyond me. But I've done it for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. Great, so there was a question here. Uh, hi, Kishor uh, Bhagat, mm. Amadeh um, Dada. My question is, you, you and your time were renowned for bringing through younger players, your Raj gave, Harbhajan Zahir. What are you looking for in young players that makes you think they'll go on to become successful when you're in that sort of phase? And who from the current crop excites you the most? I looked at talent. I looked at match-winning abilities. And, and I, as a captain, believed that I, that I had to either win or lose. I did not believe in a draw. So I picked players accordingly, who, on the day they performed, won you cricket matches. And Yuvraj did, Sehwag did, Harbhajan did, Lakshman did. Uh, so uh, my mindset was clear that I am here to win. And in my journey to win, I lose a few, but I want to win more than I lose. And, and I think that was the reason. I saw talent. Mm -hmm. I saw how they reacted to pressure. And, uh, and, and whether pressure made them behave differently. I think these are the characteristics I saw, and I was fortunate enough to see some of these exemplary cricket players. Question up here. Yeah. Yeah, Dada, uh, do you think India will play Pakistan soon in a neutral venue, or even better, in India or in Pakistan? It's a government decision, to be honest. It's something which we can't influence. But as I said, India-Pakistan matches are bigger than the Ashes. So, so there's so much talent in both the countries, uh, and I hope that it happens. Up here. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the KKR match that you referenced is one of my worst memories as a Bangalore fan. Uh, <laughs> but uh, thank you, you for everything you've you done. You were at for the ground that day? No, unfortunately not. I was in Dubai. So in Dubai. safely <laughs> protected from the, protected. From the uh, trauma. But uh, I'm, I'm soon to resign as the president of my college. But I'm still a member of my college. You've been a custodian of the game and a custodian for Indian cricket and now of world cricket for so long. But at some point, you become ex-Indian captain ex-BCCI president, ex-ICC men's cricket president. How do you detach from decision making, knowing that you know what is best for the sport, or having a mm -hmm. gut feeling of what is best for the sport, but not being able in a position to control it? What do you do in those circumstances? That's the rule of life, isn't it? You will become ex in everything. <laughs> Even the president of America becomes ex after eight years. <laughs> so that's the rule of life. So. You just have to mentally prepare that this is what is going to happen. So as long as you have it, give your best, make the most, because nothing is permanent. So once it's gone, it's gone. You move on to do something different. And that's good, because sometimes it opens up bigger doors for you. If you stick to one thing which is never ending, you actually get lost in that world. So sometimes restrictions open up other opportunities. Question up here. 
Uh, hi, I'm Ashruti. Um, so thank you so much for giving us a moment of our life. Uh, so mine is a slight non-technical question. Like from your childhood to this day, if you're given a chance hypothetically to relive any day of your life, what would it be? And if it's like, why? My first test I played was phenomenal at Lords. You know, 1996. I was in Cambridge here. We played the we played a game here as well, India versus the British universities. It was a combined team of Cambridge and Oxford, and we played in Cambridge. That was my first visit to Cambridge, although I remember nothing of it. And uh, my first test was very very special that day in Lords on Saturday, 22nd of June. It was a Saturday packed stadium at at Lords, and I got a hundred. So it was fantastic. And we have a question here. Oh. Two questions here. Okay. <laughs> uh, hello, Dada. I am uh, Abhishek, or Obhishek, as people from your part of the world would say. Uh, uh, it's in connection to something that you said at the start. Uh, as you can see, I don't have much of gray hair, but I'm still an ardent follower of test cricket. Most likely, I'll be waking up at 4 a.m. tomorrow to see Pant and Gill take strike against the New Zealanders. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious to know your opinion on where do you see the health of test cricket in, say, five to 10 years uh, down the line? It's under pressure a bit. But I think countries like India, Australia, and England are holding that flag very strongly to keep it going. And uh, as someone who has played all formats of the game, I think it's important that test cricket remains because it's going to produce greatness. And I think both test cricket and T20 cricket can survive. I know a lot of the countries feel that test cricket is a bit expensive. Uh, it doesn't make money. Uh, but everything in life is not money. And I think test cricket, it, test cricket makes money in England. Test cricket makes money in Australia. Test cricket makes money in India, but not in many other places. But I think test cricket has to be played to produce greatness. We're almost at the end. We've just got a few balls left to go. So I will do a couple online. There's a couple I've seen here. Um, quick one first from Joe Hayden. What do you think of Basball? <laughs> it's good on flat wickets. <laughs> <laughs> Moment it starts turning, it's a different game. So a mixed, a mixed rating. Yeah. OK. Happy Diwali, Dada. Happy I have Diwali. one question. So you talked about legends in the past, but I feel like with IPL coming and so many crickets going on, there are so many options for selectors. So one individual player do not get the chance to play. You know, you, you need some time in the national team. And to become legend, you have to play for like 15, 20 years. And nowadays, if one, playing, one player is not performing, suddenly it means there are replacements available, and then that player fades out. So it's difficult to create legend, so key, so keep especially performing. in the four, last four or five years. So keep performing. <laughs> uh, it was the same with us also. You know, you, you didn't perform two, three matches, uh, somebody else taking your place. So the only thing is keep performing. You might slip a few, but you have to keep performing. And, and yes, it's a big challenge. It's big competition. There's so many good players. There's competition in your world as well. There's so many good professionals to take your place. And, and that's what it is. You know, that's what makes geniuses. That's what makes successful people. And most importantly, keeps you on your toes. You know, you, you don't turn up. You turn up to perform. I think that's very important. Jonathan Brooks says, what's the best sledge you encountered or heard about? <laughs> One English captain told one of my players, after he smashed a 90 and beat England, said, I thought you were a taxi driver. How could you bat so well? <laughs> and they were friends. <laughs> and they were friends. So okay. in a heated argument, and I'm not mentioning some of the Aussie, Aussie words which they use. <laughs> so yeah. OK. and. Last question from the room we'll have over here. Hi, Dada. Happy Diwali. Happy Diwali. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, about how you nurture the leadership pipeline, being a captain. Will you know who's the upcoming captain? And in the game, how do you nurture the pipeline of leadership? I didn't nurture too much because he would have taken my place quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but jokes apart, uh, you know, you have a vice captain who is supposed to be the future captain, and you work with him. You work with him, and, and I was captain of India for six years. 
and uh, and just worked with somebody but to be honest i did not look at nurturing uh, someone because i was busy trying to hold on my place <laughs> because if i don't win somebody else will captain india so I was my focus was more on how i can win cricket matches to remain captain and and contribute as a captain but i think captain's captainship is not something which you teach you it's it's inbuilt in you and then you and then you start getting better leadership is a special art leading is a special art and not many do it not many know how to do it there are many who you will see are happy being at the back and there are some who will who will take responsibility up front and i think the best leaders do that final question from online uh, is from omkar meta dada when can we expect your biopic it's in the making <laughs> hopefully we'll have a release next year next year so we we we've sh we've already shown the short here we'd be happy to show the full one it's i suspect there'd be an audience it's if a you three come. Hour, it's a 3 hour movie so <laughs> would, would anybody here be prepared to come for a 3 hour movie with surav here yeah. i think I think we have some takers. So um, thank you, and sorry to the people who, who I couldn't fit in, but I think you've done a, a fantastic performance here. Um, you know, really wonderful. This whole thing came about because our master, Sunita Elaine, went to Lords. And I think what we hear is that Sunita should go, go to the Lords and elsewhere more often and bring back such amazing people. So thank you, Sunita. But thank you, Surav, for joining us. What's been an absolutely fantastic time. Thank Thanks you, for spending Julian. so much time with thank us. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Sunita.